guys, Rachel here with the next installment uh, of my video series, Parts and How to Thread Up Sewing Machines. So the first video was the parts to the sewing machine. The second video, we wound a bobbin and we put it in. Uh, the third video is all going to be going to be all about threading the needle. Uh, so the first thing we need to know about Singer machines is that most of them, even modern Singer machines, require special Singer needles. Um, the reason why is because their shafts tend to be a little bit longer and on a lot of them they're fully rounded still. Um, I think these ones do have a flat to them and so you want to make sure that you have the right type of needle for the type of sewing machine you have. In general, Singer is the only brand that requires their own special needles, especially on the vintage machines specifically. And that was because, you know, they had the cornerstone on the market basically up until, you know, probably the 60s or 70s. So first off, you want to make sure you have the right type of needle. So one, I need a Singer brand needle. And then as well, you want to make sure that you have a really good size. Um, so this one is a 9014, which is a pretty standard size, good for 50 or 40 weight threads, uh, maybe even a little bit thicker, like a 30 weight. Um, now, I do believe Singer makes types of needles as well. So depending on what kind of fabric you're sewing on, there's different types of needles. Um, say, for instance, a jeans fabric, if you're working on a jeans fabric, or like um, Schmetz. Schmetz makes like quilting needles. I don't have any other Singer needles, so that's why I'm showing you guys this. But this is a quilting needle, meaning that the shape of the eye, the way that the point is created, uh, is going to help go through three layers of quilting and things like that. So make sure you get the right type of needle. So, and then the next thing you want to do is have the right type of thread. Um, I generally do quilting, and so I work with cotton thread. This is a Mettler Silk Finish Cotton, and you want to make sure that your thread is new. Okay, thread does go bad. Uh, it is a natural fiber, especially cotton, especially is a natural fiber. And so if you've had thread sitting around out in the sun for like five years, it's probably not very good anymore. And it can be really brittle and can actually cause more issues than you might think. It'll cause tension issues. It'll break a lot on you. It'll just be a nightmare. And so you want to make sure you have newer thread, nice quality thread, spend the extra $2, you know, stop going to the dollar bin at Joann's for Coates and Clark. Go buy yourself a nice bowl of thread, okay? So to thread this guy, I'm just going to put my thread on the spool pin here. Then there is a little hook back here. So I'm going to hook it, bring it down. Now this is a mechanical machine with an external uh, tension dial. So right under here, see how it's circular? These are tension discs. And so there are two discs that go like this. And so they'll push, they'll like create tension on the thread so that when it pulls through the needle, it creates a really beautiful but strong sturdy stitch. Okay, so for this part, we want to make sure we're going through the tension discs. And there's basically like a plate right here that's stopping me from doing anything else but go right in front of it. And then you want to click up and back. So you see how this piece is moving? That's what we want. We want that, that tells us, that indicates to us that our thread is in the correct position, okay? So now the next part is to come put your thread through the take-up lever area. Let's see if you guys can see that right here. This is a take-up lever area. Now on these older machines, um, it's just a circle that you have to get through. So some people will try and struggle this way, the tip of the thread. Uh, one of the things that I do um, is just twist it here. So you just kind of do give it a twist and then pop it through that hole really quick. So you don't need to lick it or anything like that. It's kind of gross. Um, so like that. Modern machines are going to be a little bit different as we'll see in my next video series when I work on a newer Janome. And then basically you're just going to kind of follow the guidelines. Anytime you see a hook or like right down here, there's like a spindly thing. You want to make sure that you're putting the thread through those, um, through those areas. Okay. So let me make sure you guys can see that. I might do another angle too. Okay. So hold on one second. I'm going to put it at a different angle too. So you guys can see it another way. Okay. So I got a little bit closer here so you guys could see. We went behind the hook right down here, and now we're going to be putting our thread 
into the tension discs. Okay, we're gonna click it over. Sorry, I'm trying not to talk into the phone, okay? So what you wanna see is that this little metal piece moves up and down with the thread, okay? So, cause that's part of our tension. And we're gonna thread this through here. This is what's called the take up lever. You guys still can't see that. This is your take up lever. This is basically what's moving the, the needle up and down. So again, I have my thread through that part. I'm just gonna twist it. Thread it through. So without the thread in that place, it's not gonna go anywhere. Okay, so then next up, we go through here. Basically, if there's any sort of metal hook or anything like that, you wanna go through it. Okay, there's this one. Now, um, to install the needle, I unscrew this. So here's my needle. Let's see if it'll... Oh, come on. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but there's a flat, a flat side and a rounded side to this needle. Okay, so on this machine, this particular type of machine, the flat is going to go to the left hand side, okay? And you'll be able to tell if you have it in there wrong if you're trying to fight it and everything like that. So let me get this zoomed back in. So, okay. So the flat is to the left hand side and it's allowing me to push the needle all the way up, which is what we want. So then for the next part, we're just hooking it around everything that we're supposed to hook it around to. Okay, and let me see. Let me get close. Okay, so I moved in a little bit closer again. I just wanted to show you guys again. And the flat is to the left hand side on this machine because this is a vintage, remember? And then I'm just gonna take the screw and tighten it up. Here's my thread. Obviously it's gonna be harder to thread the longer it is. And one of the tricks I have, instead of licking the tip of the thread like 150 times, what I do is just, I kind of lick the tip of my finger, give it a little once over, and then you kind of want to put your finger on the other side of the needle. Now this machine, again, since the flat went to the left-hand side, I'm actually going to be threading the needle from right, right to left, okay? Okay, so I need to just cut it. There it goes. So I threaded it from right to left, and there it is. Um, our bobbin is already in place. So all I'm going to do is turn the hand wheel once to pull the bobbin thread up. And there you have it. Hey guys, welcome to another video on some basic maintenance of a vintage Singer 301 machine. Uh, today I'm going to just show you um, how to get into the bobbin area, clean it out, and then some basic oiling procedures. Um, that you guys should follow. So uh, normally our bobbin case is sitting in here like so. So what we need to do is take it out. Now it really is going to depend on how much you're sewing on it and everything like that, how regularly you should be getting in this area to clean it out. Um, I've been sewing quite a bit on it lately, so I want to make sure that I'm getting in here, taking a little cleaning brush and just cleaning out any excess lint. So what happens is when the lint builds up, inside the bobbin case area um, is that it'll impact eventually impact on your feed dogs making it really hard for them to feed the fabric through it will also get in the way of your thread paths causing tension issues and things like that now this is a hand-me-down machine so i don't know if normally the hook moves like that or if it's supposed to be removable 
Um, if you have a newer front-loading bobbin machine, say like a Bernina, more than likely to be able to just pull the whole hook piece out. Um, so what we're going to do, so, but either way, you just clean it out, clean all the fuzzies out, right? Um, and the next thing you want to do pretty regularly um, is oil in here. And so I have this, this here, Zoom Spout. You want to make sure that it is called sewing machine oil. Please, please do not use WD-40. Do not use olive oil. Uh, and yes, I have seen someone who's used olive oil on their sewing machine. You cannot just use anything. It needs to be a special type of oil. Uh, and you only want to oil front-loading bobbin sewing machines, okay? Um, this is important because you can see here we have a metal piece on a metal piece and the metal pieces move together and so that's why we need to oil it to make sure that everything's going to move really smoothly. Um, you just want to get a little drop plop right there. I just did one drop right there. Um, I don't think I really need anything else. I am going to move this around a couple of times. There we go and that should be good. Now, when you oil it, before you start on a new project, you want to run some scrap fabric through first to make sure that any of that excess is out. Okay, and there you go. Your bobbin case is nice and oiled, ready to go. Um, another part that you're going to oil on a machine like this is the interior here. Um, so let's see, can you see that? Okay. Let me show you guys again. So this side piece right here just opens up like so, and you can see all these moving parts. So you can see there's metal on metal in here, and so that's why you wanna make sure that you're consistently oiling, oiling it. Up in this take up ever lever area, you probably won't have to oil it quite as much, maybe every, maybe every other month or so. Um, and you don't wanna to do mu too much. You don't wanna go crazy with it. Um, you just need a little bit. I'm probably going to, I'm just going to go in where I see metal touching metal and kind of do a little, I'm not even squeezing this bottle or anything. I'm just kind of getting in there. Now I'm not a technician. I don't service these professionally. I just happen to uh, work in a selling store. So I know that it's important uh, to take care of these things. Now, if you have an instruction manual, you want to review that first. Um, it might give you some other areas in which you need to come in and oil it, but for the most part, you're going to be all set um, if you just put it where metal is going to be touching metal. And it's really easy to tell when it's needing oil too, when you hear it squeaking a lot, um, maybe hearing a grinding noise or something of that nature. So the next area I kind of want to get into is going to be in the needle plate area, so let me situate some things. Okay, so the next area you want to make sure that you're maintaining regularly is underneath the needle plate. And I know that can seem intimidating to some people to have to open up oops, this area. Some people will use like a nickel as a screwdriver. Um, so you can do that if it's easier for you. If you have like an L-shaped little doohickey, that would be good too. Now, you're de again, depending on how much you're using the machine and what you're using it for, um, I would probably get underneath here every four bobbin runs. So about every four bobbin runs, you want to oil the bobbin case area and you want to get into the needle plate area and clean it out. And then I would say at least once a month getting up to the top and oiling it. Okay. That to make sure you don't lose those screws. This will just pop right off. And as you can see in here, let me zoom in a little. As you can see right here, we have lots of little fuzzies, okay? So at this point, if you have like a small vacuum cleaner attachment, you can use that to suck it up. As you can see, I mean, I haven't even been doing anything that crazy on this guy. I've been doing some pillowcases and part of a quilt top, not even the quilting part, and it's pretty fuzzy in there. So that's why you want to get in there regularly, because you can see how if you have a ton of that built up in here, it won't allow the 
the feed dogs to move properly. And so you can see them here, see how they're moving. Whee! Okay, so you wanna make sure it's all cleaned, cleaned out nice and well. And that's it, that's all you gotta do. Um, I think there may be some parts, pot spots in here where you might need to oil it too. Um, I'm actually not too sure. So I will find out on that part. Um, I would also suggest if maybe it's been a while since the machine was professionally serviced by a certified technician. Um, if you're really fond of the machine and if it's still working fairly well, it's just needing a good deep, deep cleaning. Um, I would recommend investing, you know, about 150 bucks and getting it professionally serviced by a technician. They'll be able to take all these covers off. They'll be able to make sure that all the parts are, you know, in good condition and that they're going to last a little bit longer for you. Um, so yeah, you know, you want to do your part as much as you can to keep it running. Um, but as far as like an actual service service, you know, timing, if you need the timing to readjusted and things like that, um, you know, look up your local sewing machine, uh, service and repair and, um, ask if they, you know, if they're able to service vintage singer machines, um, and you want to make sure that they can specifically do the vintage ones for you. Okay, so we've gone over uh, everything about this machine, the parts to it. We wound a bobbin together, we threaded up the needle, and we've learned how to maintain it. Uh, so for, that's that's it for this little series. Um, the next video series I'm going to do is going to be on a more modern computerized machine. So uh, stay tuned, subscribe so that you guys can check that out. All right, thank you guys. Have a good one.